G'day and welcome to Pepsing. Now, you've clicked on this video because either you want to learn how to get started on Discord or you've clicked because you just want to watch another one of my videos. Fair enough. But either way, in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to use Discord and how to get started as a new person to Discord. <laughs> Now, assuming you haven't done this, there's actually a couple ways you can use Discord. One is the Windows or Mac application version. The other one's for your iPhone or Android. And the last one is in your browser. Now, as you can see here, the browser version looks identical to the application version. If we go to the application version, I'm on a different screen, but they look identical. So if you're on the browser, you don't have to worry about that. As for iPhone and Android, Discord may look a little different, but either way, the steps in this video are gonna be applicable to everyone. It doesn't matter what you're using. And these steps will show you exactly how to get started on Discord. Discord. So anyway, you go to discord.com, download whatever version you have right here. Then all you got to do is add your details and register an account. And then you'll be greeted with a page very similar to this one. As we can see, we're just a lost little account with no friends, no servers, and nowhere to really go. So we're going to fix that. So the first quick step we're going to do as a new account is go down here and look at our user settings and making sure that you're happy with how your account looks. Now, of course, Discord is going to want to verify our account. If you haven't done that, Obviously, just go ahead and do that. I'll do that right now. Anyway, after you've verified yourself, you'll see a page just like this. Once you open this, you can either change your avatar, your username, your email, your password, or turn on two-factor authentication. You can't actually change your number until you purchase either Discord Nitro or Discord Nitro Classic. But besides that, most of your account is quite customizable. Now, with that done, I think the most important next step is finding a server to join or creating your own server. So if you want to join or create a new server, you can click right here. So in this video, we're actually going to completely skip over how to create a server and we're just going to go with joining a server. Creating a server is very detailed heavy and would take a very long time to explain. So in the near future, I am going to create a video on how to create a Discord server. If you'd like to see that, please subscribe and even turn on the bell and you'll be guaranteed to see my video on how to create a server. There's actually multiple ways you can join a server. One is through clicking here and using links, which I'll show you just how to do that in a few seconds. But another method Discord is implemented is explore public servers. If you click here, you get greeted with a whole bunch of popular servers, featured communities as they like to call it, which you can just join straight up by clicking and you can just feel free to join. And if you wanna find a specific server or community, you can just type it in the top here and hopefully you will be greeted with the server that you're looking for. So if we tap on Quackity, we'll be taken to this screen right here. It is always recommended that you check out the rules of the server Make sure to read over what they allow, what they don't allow, and just the general rules of Discord, because if you don't, you could easily be banned, or if you do something even worse, you could have your account taken down by the actual Discord. So always read the rules before you do anything else. Currently, we're in preview mode because we joined through Explore Public Servers. You can click out to leave and you've never been part of it. Now, there are still a couple other methods in which you can join a Discord server. This is probably going to be your most common one. So let's say your friend has sent you a link to their Discord server. So you can either click on the link and get sent directly to the server. Or if that doesn't work, you can copy the Discord link, go here and paste it right here. And it will do the exact same thing. If you'd like to try out joining a server, I don't know where to begin, I would recommend joining my server. The links, the link is down below in the description or on the screen right now. So now that we've found our servers, we need to understand how to start messaging and how to use the main functions of Discord. So as I said before, it's important to know the rules and info of a server. As you may notice, a lot of the rules are gonna be very similar to every other server you join. This is because, well, every server pretty much needs to stay within the same Discord Terms of Service guidelines. Now, I'll just list off a few more quick tips that you should know when joining a server. A lot of the times, most servers will have some sort of verification system within one of their rules or information pages. You may see something very similar to this, which is a reaction role. If you click something like this, it should unlock you to the rest of the server, as we can see here. Majority of servers also put their main information at the top here, in which you can go through the most important things to finding the general chat. Now, another quick tip is that you may hear the word ping, P-I-N-G. Within Discord, this is basically when you at someone. But as a general rule of thumb, save pinging for only when you're trying to get the attention of someone you've been talking to within the chat. Don't ping the owner, the moderators, anyone who's not asking for it, and especially don't at everyone. Lastly, final tip is to check out Discord Terms of Service and Discord guidelines because if you don't follow any of these rules, it is likely that your account will be terminated or suspended. So just give a quick read over of that if you don't want to have any problems with your account. 
Firstly, you would need to find a channel in which you can speak in. Usually it's the general chat or the main chat where you should be able to message. For this, I'm gonna do all my messages and everything else in the staff test channel, but make sure that you find a channel you can speak in. So, firstly, it's pretty easy. You can just send a message like hi. Now, if you'd like to send some sort of image, you can just go to the left and click this little plus button here, and you can choose whatever file you have to send a photo. Once it's here, you can add a comment to your photo, or you could also add some sort of emoji and just simply press upload and there it is. If you wanna test out a feature, you can mark a spoiler, boom. As we've just seen, you can go to the right and click emojis. Now, a cool feature is that you can actually use every emoji from every different server you've joined. The only thing is you need to have either Nitro or Nitro Classic, and then you can use the emojis from different servers. But quite simply, that's pretty easy. So, some other things you might wanna send are GIFs. You can easily do that by clicking here to the right on GIFs and you know, searching up whatever you wanna find. Much like many other messaging apps, you can do that. If you don't wanna do it that way, you can actually upload a GIF you've saved on your own computer. You can write a message just like a photo and let it load and got yourself a GIF. Another easy method is to copy the address of a GIF you found and just copy and pasting it right in. Next one, posting links. Uh, super easy, just copy and paste the link. Finally, there are a few interesting ways in which you can send messages, like the one I just did then. That's also a whole different video on text formatting, which I will do in the future. So if you wanna know more about how to format your text to make some interesting, colored, some bold, all different types of writing, again, subscribe, and I will make that one in the future. You might find yourself wanting to message a bot for any particular reasons, such as Dank Mimo or Me6, and to command one of the bots, as they all have different prefixes, usually within the server, there's some sort of instruction as to what the prefix is to command the bot. For example, Me6, up the top here, we can see that the exclamation point is used to get the commands for Me6. So if we just do this, and we do this whole bunch of commands that you'll, you'll figure out. So for example, if you do Me6, and we use the exclamation point, then me6 will reply to us. Usually there's a whole bunch of bots that you can test out, figure that out yourself and have some fun with it as you go. A few more useful tips for messaging is that if you'd like to react to a message, then you just hover over a message, add reaction and you can add whatever you'd like. Once you've made a reaction, anyone else who can read the message also is able to react on your reaction. So that's pretty cool. Another thing you can do is edit the message, whatever you want. If you need to change the message, simply edit it right there. And finally, you can click more here. There's a whole bunch of different things to do, all pretty cool. You can test them out yourself if you want. You know, I think the most interesting one is quote, quotes what they say, also, also pings the person who said it. So now we can move on to the stage of what I like to think of as server layout. So understanding these steps can be quite handy in understanding exactly how to use each channel and just the whole server in general. So if you look at the top right here, you can see these three icons. You got muting, which you can do if you need to, but it pretty much just mutes the channel. Here is a very important one, which is pinned messages. If you haven't checked the pin yet, usually there's a red bubble there. This is where moderators or admins or server owners put a message there so people know exactly how to use a channel. For example, here in counting, they're not exactly important instructions, but we do pin every hundred messages. Lastly, we have member list and that just moves the member list, as this shows exactly who is online and who can read the channel that you are looking at. And now we move on to rank and roles, one of the most important parts of a Discord server. If we look to the right here, we can see that this is my account right here. And if I click on myself, I'll see that I have a few roles. Now, you usually get at least one role auto given to you when you join a server. For my server, it is when you verify yourself, you get given the before 10k role. Some servers, usually larger ones, but also many other smaller channels, have some sort of bot that does a leveling up system. Most of the time, it's sending messages, which gives you XP, and the more XP you have, the more you level up, and each time you level up and you get to a certain rank, one of the server owners has probably made another role to auto assign to you as you level up. These roles are important to understand as usually within a server, specific roles decide what channels you can and cannot message in. For example, with the counting channel, I don't have the role that specifically allows me to message here. So I pretty much can't do anything besides read it. My server, for example, has a particular channel to show you what roles you can get and what they allow you to access and many more other things. Finally, for server layout, we have the left here, which is the server channels. As you can see, there are a whole bunch of channels here and it may seem a little confusing and every server has a different layout as to how they lay out their channels, but it's gonna look something like this. It's pretty straightforward. Scroll through, read each one, click on it, see what you can type in, see what you can't type in. 
and everything in here you can't edit. All the things you can do is just create an invite and invite someone else. As we're here, I may as well show you how to invite people to the server you're on, specifically the channel that you just gave them the invite link to. Each channel has their own little icon to send an invite. As we can see here, I can click create invite. This will create an invite code that will go directly to the server, but more specifically to the counting channel. If you're unverified and you get sent to a channel that you can't read as an unverified person, you'll still be taken to that channel as you can see here. However, you can't actually read or load the messages. So you just kind of have this weird looking screen, but you have all these other channels that you can click onto, including the verified channel where the person will verify themselves. So basically if someone sent an invite from a channel they can't see, then they'll kind of see the channel name, but they won't be able to see the channel's content. A big thing to note is that the invite will expire in one day. So a precaution you should take is click set this link to never expire. You can also click here and select exactly how long you want the invite to exist. So you could also just click never, number of uses, no limit. So always look out for that as you may forget that your invite is only temporary. So generate link and feel free to send that to one of your friends. I would also note and recommend that you do not send an invite link randomly to a random person on a server as that could get you banned from a server or even have your account terminated from Discord as it is against the rules to send unsolicited Discord invites in DMs. And now for the final factor of server layout, we have voice channels, otherwise known as VCs. If you're just a normal member, voice channels are quite simple. And if you're a server owner or moderator, there's a couple more complex options in which you can use, such as moving members, deafening them, server mute, server deafen, a whole lot more options. So if you're a normal member and you'd like to join a voice channel, all you need to do is simply click on whatever voice channel you want to join. And once you're here, you can just start talking to people. Now, a few options you have is the mute button down here. Uh, this button mutes yourself, so no one else can hear you. This is deafen. This prevents you from hearing anyone else in the voice channel. Finally, the last option is that you can right click on a member in the voice channel and you'll see a tab that looks just like this. There's a whole bunch of things you can check out, but for voice channels, all you need to know is either mute or disable video. For mute, that's pretty straightforward. That just mutes the member that you've clicked on and you won't be able to hear them. And disable video is pretty straightforward. If someone is streaming their video within the voice channel, you can just click disable video and you can't see it anymore. Finally, the last thing you can do is either stream video. If you have a webcam or you're on your phone, you can just press video or you can press screen, which allows you to stream whatever's on your computer. I almost forgot to mention the search bar up here. This is actually quite useful and important. So basically all the messages in the Discord server have been pretty well archived and are completely searchable within this search bar. So it's a hugely useful tool if you're trying to find something at any date, by any time, by anyone in any channel. The first thing you can do is either obviously click the search bar here to start searching, or you can press Control F, which will instantly make a filter to only see the channel that you're looking in. As you can see here, you have a whole bunch of search options that you can choose to find the message you're looking for. I'll call these options filters, but as you can see, what you can do is type, for example, from, and then type in the name that you're looking for. As you can see, it opens a huge number of results of all the messages I have sent in the server. As I didn't specify which channel I'm looking in, we have all these results. And you can sort this from newest, oldest, most relevant. What you can do once you've found what you're looking for is click the jump button and it will take you exactly to what you're looking at. In the search bar, you can also stack filters. So what I mean by that is I can add before and let's say September 30th. And then let's say also find what it has let's say how many messages have a link. All we need to do, like any other filter we're trying to find, is type the filter word and make sure you add a colon at the front of the word. This turns the word into the filter we're trying to use, so always make sure you add those two dots at the very end. And we can just keep on stacking filters to find exactly what we're looking for. But once you've found it, you can just press enter and it'll show you all the results for the filter you just implemented. And that is pretty much all you need to know about the search filter. And that is all you need to know about server layout. <laughs> So, now you've made your way around the entire server and have found yourself talking to some people and perhaps making some new friends. So, now you want to be able to talk to them when they're not on the same server, have your own private discussions, and basically become friends on Discord. Well, there's a few ways to do that. If you would like to just straight up message someone, you can right click here, click message, and it will take you to their DMs. Now, this is a quick and easy way to direct message someone and you can just simply type in the chat here. 
even before your friends, depending on their settings, you can actually start a voice call or video call with them. I wouldn't recommend this as they probably don't want you just randomly calling them before you even have a conversation, but you can do that. So anyway, as said before, you can start a voice call, start a video call, uh, you can pin a message, and lastly, you can add friends, but we don't have any yet, so we will send newbie a friend request. If you click on a person's profile, you see a couple things about them. User info, mutual servers, mutual friends, and of course, send friend request. You can also click here and you got block and message. But if we go back to the server and assume that we're coming from here, you can do pretty much the same thing and click add friend. And if they accept it, you get that little notification. Anyway, that's pretty straightforward. If you check here, you can see that you now have a friend, newbie is online, and you can go ahead and message them. If you wanna make a group chat or a group call, you can just go more. Let's say start voice call. To make a group call, you can click here, add friends, find your friend and create group DM. And that'll start calling. And that'll automatically start calling the other friend that you've added to the group DM. You now also have a group DM down here and you can message each other and everyone will see it. You'll also notice on the left here, you can see the actual group call. So if you click away, you can still be in the call and you can just click back and you'll be right back at where you were. So you can just disconnect and then they are left with their own little call. And when everyone's hung up, you are left with a group chat, which you can all still message in. And yeah, it's pretty fun. Okay, now one of the final key points of Discord that I would like to run over is your own personal account. There's a lot of interesting things that you can do with your own account. So we'll start from the surface and work our way into it. If you go down and click on yourself, you can set your own status. You can go idle, which shows people that you're online, but you're not really doing anything. We have do not disturb, which obviously shows that you're not gonna receive any notifications. And we have invisible, which will make it seem like you're offline, but you still have access to Discord as if you were online. Right here we have custom status, which is what the little writing you see under a lot of people's names are. You can just put anything you want in here really, and you can set how long it's gonna be there for. So if we just make it one hour, then it will be under our name for one hour. Press save and it's gonna be right there. Clicking down here just copies your username and number. And that's pretty much it on the surface. So if we go into user settings, there's a lot of important stuff. A lot of these are actually quite important and quite interesting. So I'll go through these one by one so you know exactly how each one works. So the privacy and safety tab is fairly useful. We've got these three options up here, which you'll see straight away. If you look through this, you can see that, that these options scan your direct messages just to make sure that you're not getting anything too explicit. You can change that however you want. All things here are pretty self-explanatory. And with this list, I'm just gonna show you the things that are actually important and everything else should be pretty self-explanatory if you just look through it yourself. So authorized apps, that'll show the Discord bots and things that you've added to your server. Connections is pretty cool. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of different applications you can connect to your Discord account. Once you click any of these, you can just add your details and go through the steps. And by the end of it, if you've connected whatever you've connected, down here on your profile, it should show you what your connected accounts are. And so when anyone clicks on your account, they will see this. And if anyone clicks this button, they will be taken to the account that you have linked, such as my YouTube channel, which uh, is pretty cool. Billing is just for Nitro and payments through Discord. This one's an interesting one. This is where you go to buy or gift Discord Nitro or Discord Nitro Classic. I will do a whole nother video in the future about whether Discord Nitro is worth it or Discord Nitro Classic, which one's better and how the payments work. So if you wanna see that one, also subscribe because I will be doing that video in the future. Next, gift inventory, doesn't really matter. Next one that's fairly interesting and could be considered important is, is the Discord Hype Squad when you click here you will be greeted to this page in which you can click to join a hype squad. There's one in three different hype squads that you could enter into once you've done the quiz. If you don't like your squad, you can redo the quiz and your hype squad may change. But that is also an entire video for itself, which I'll do in the future. But if you just click up here or watch the video or just read this page, you'll, you'll pretty much know what to do. Voice and video, this one's quite important. As you can see here, input device is the microphone that you use to talk through. So if I click this, that is a microphone I'm currently using to talk through right now. And that'll also be the microphone that I will use to talk through Discord. This is your output device, pretty straightforward. You can connect it to your headphones or speaker, whatever works, and you can check your, your volume. volume. Sounds a bit laggy, but in an actual chat, it pretty much sounds fine. So that's where you can test, change your volumes, whatever you want, it's all pretty much here. And that's a fairly important one. Overlay, I've never really bothered changing this, but this is just how you can change the layout of the page and where the notifications come from. 
And honestly, that's pretty much it. All the other options you can check for yourself if you're interested in seeing what they allow you to do, what they can change. But in the end, they're not very important, so I won't bother putting them in the video. Uh, the last one here is light mode, because that one's fairly interesting. If anyone wants to be a heathen and actually use light mode, then they can go ahead and use it right here. So, that is it for user settings, and I hope that was helpful. <laughs> Now for the very end here, I'm just going to quickly label some tips and tricks you may want to know. First one is you can change your nickname in a server. So you just right click on yourself and click change nickname and you can simply just type any sort of name you want. So as long as it's an appropriate name and you can just click save and you've got yourself a nickname specific to this server. So if I look at myself, so if I look at myself in a different server, I will see that my account is the exact same name. Another tip is that a lot of servers actually hire moderators through recruiting their Discord members during a recruiting round. And what I mean by that is if you check the information of a server, a lot of the times they actually have recruiting rounds every so often in which if you talk a lot and are a good member and are of a specific level or rank, you could actually apply to become a moderator for a server. So you can keep an eye out for that because moderators are actually not always just people that the server owner knows and they can just be for anyone who does a good job on the server. So, and finally, my last tip is to check out support.discord.com as this is Discord's homepage for everything you need help with. If you've got questions about billing or getting started, server setup, community programs, all the stuff is pretty much here. If you can't find it there, you can search it in the search bar and that'll pretty much have every answer you need with a legitimate answer from Discord. So that is it for this video. I'll have the links to almost everything I mentioned in this video in the description below. So if you want to check them out straight away, you can just click the link below. If this video did help you in any sort of way, I would recommend subscribing and turning on the bell notification because it is very likely that you actually won't be recommended a new video by me if you aren't subscribed or have the bell notification on. So in the future, I will be making specific how-to videos for Discord with almost everything you may wonder or things you might not even realize. So, so if you want to make sure that you actually get to see an important how-to video, then just do the subscribe button and like the video if this helped you in any way. Also guys, I'll read every comment on this video. So if you comment below, if this video helped you, if it didn't help you, hopefully I can reply to you and help answer your question. And finally, if you would like to chat with me, just go to my Discord server. I'm pretty active there. Even just sending $1 lets me know that you guys enjoy the way I make my videos and are there to support me making my content. And in saying that, this has been another video by Pepsi. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.